Get her. I'm gonna quit saying that if you quit getting her. It's very soggy out this morning. I don't think we'll be combining for a while because I'm sure the plants are wet, but we do have probably four or five hours worth of drying left in the wet bin, so why not fire up the dryer? Well, that's good. Now the yard is finally really noisy again. Bye, Anna. As wet as it is out there and fog rolled in early this morning, it seems like it's only gonna keep getting wetter, so. We're gonna hold off on combining because we're 99% positive it's not gonna go right now. And I'm just gonna head out and get some tillage done. That looks like it's doing a really nice job. It's cho chopping those stalks up, the stringy stalks that we gotta chew up, and it's leaving a little bit of residue on top, which is good. It'll help prevent some wind erosion over the winter when things freeze in. You know, the other really handy thing about these Mendeco storms is that you can use bungee straps to put tile riser flags on it, on it, on them. And then, when you get to a spot in the field where the combine ate the old tile flag, you can replace it. That's just a handy feature that these come with. But they don't provide the bungee straps, so you gotta have those. Also, pro tip, when you don't have a tile riser flag and you don't want the tillage guy to run it over, you leave some standing corn. Second pro tip, never ever, under any circumstances, grab the old fiberglass tile flag that remains there. You just leave it alone, leave it be. I wanted to step out for a minute here and walk through an issue that I've been having. And we had this issue last year, not actually with this machine last fall, but with a couple other machines that we had out here that we demoed. One of the deals with these vertical tillage pieces, which they work really, really nice. You can see here, our soil is a little bit sticky right now and we're not wet. That's just our soil. It's just that sticky. I've done, 80 or 90 acres here so far this morning and I've run into this where I've had to pull out a line to try to spread out a clump that builds up in front of the mainframe tires or inside the discs. It's just a clump of sticky, sticky soil that gets in there and starts pushing and it just builds up, builds up, and builds up and leaves a giant streak across the field. If you're a farmer, you've run a disc, you know what I'm talking about. Now it's easy to clear out, but it is pretty annoying and we have had that issue with I think every single vertical tillage piece that we've had out here. These things do a great job, but if there's any moisture in our soils as sticky as it is, that's the problem we have. You can clearly see the streak right here that it was leaving and you can see the soil's working up nice, but this soil is just black and sticky. That's what we have. That's a huge part of the reason why tillage is so dominant up here. Why everybody wants to turn their fields black in the fall because we, will, we need to get it black so that it dries out in the spring so we can plant as early as possible. Because from about this week until March, mid-March, late March, nothing around here will dry. It will freeze solid. Any moisture we get is gonna be done drying because it's gonna get cold. Things are gonna freeze over. We need to get in the field as early as we can in the spring and that's a big part of the reason why we hurry up and we rush this stuff. I also noticed this and how crooked this one is right here. The bearing is tight and it's spinning fine but something's not right, something's bent in there. But for now we just want to get some stuff done because there is rain in the forecast potentially tonight. So we just want to cover as many acres as we can. And that's one of the things we do love about this is I'm able to cover a lot of ground compared to a deep ripper. Right there. There you go. There's a perfect example of what I'm struggling with. Now you could, and for a little bit I did kind of blame that one bent 
disc blade in there, but it's not that because it doesn't always do it in the same spot. It's kind of all over the board, and I and I know that that's. I'm watching it. It's not touching the one next to it. It it, it isn't that. It's just sticky soils. So we just come back at the pile kind of sideways and drop it halfway down and try to spread it out a little bit. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes you just end up with a pile in your field. Parts of mainly southeastern Minnesota in the past 24 hours. More Good showers stuff. will linger there today while most of the rest of the state stays dry. That's going to do it for the first 120 acres here today. Dad's got the combine running just down the road so we're only moving with one machine in a really bad field but we're kind of thinking right now we want to catch up on tillage so I'm just going to move down the road and start another 140 acres down there kind of right across from where he's combining. If for some reason the weather changes we feel like we got to move with two machines I'll be right there and jump at the second machine but for now I'm going to keep raking it black chopping it up. Well, that didn't last long. I made uh, about two and a half rounds here. It's too muddy for this thing. It plugged up, uh, but I think, eight times in two and a half rounds. I, I can't keep it cleaned out in there unless I take all the gang angle away and just do the chopping, which works, but you can't even see the spot where I came back right there. I mean, it does a good job of chopping, if that's what I want to do. But we want some black soil, so I'm going to go home, actually, and put the heavy disc on it. We're going to put the Wishek disc on it that we just bought here uh, a month ago just for the reason of trying to get through some of this stuff because that should create some black soil. It's going to be a lot slower process, but that's what we're going to try next because this, this was not working over here. It's been a slight change of plans for a little bit here. Instead of putting that Wishek on right we're now, going we're going to go try a different field out here north of the house. It's a little bit drier, coarser soils. Few more rocks we'll see maybe this will pull through there better and then at least we're covering acres but first I, I need a soda pop oh my gosh is that Aaron from the between the rows YouTube channel yes it is <laughs> oh wow I had to make a presence known at the farm for a change. That's, it's like a it's like a crossover a collaboration deal right just moving different dirt moving different dirt yeah yeah rather than throwing it we're moving it today I suppose yeah well that lasted about 400 feet yeah, we were lucky. Yeah, we're going back to the Wishek. The Wishek plan. We're not going back to it because I've never run it before. What's it like at your work where you have to turn the camera on and off every time you do something? Took a little finagling, but we got the Wishek hooked. Aaron, I've never had this happen, but the first time on the first try, all the hydraulics are hooked up correctly. We better start over then, something else has got to be wrong. Is that a bad, bad omen? We never luck out that early, <laughs> do we? Is that too deep? I think so. I do too. Well, Aaron left me and obviously I haven't turned on the camera for a while, like four to five hours. Yeah. I got Onyx out here, we're watching some dirt track racing on the iPad live streaming some stuff just about done with this field uh the second combine the the newer combine the 780 broke down cleaning fan went out so nate and jim have been working up there just using the old machine we're gonna keep going a little bit more tonight and um i'll see you tomorrow then we've got a truck to dump right now and then we're going to turn around and take the same truck load of full of dry corn to pull the center out of that bin and send it down to the ethanol plant. And on a fun little side note, we had two combines go down yesterday afternoon. So the 780, the newer one, had a cleaning fan go out. We believe it's in the shop at the local dealer right now. The second one, the 9870, the older one, we're going to figure out what's going on with that. I, I, I'm wondering if the feeder house is just plugged that tight with so much corn material because of dealing with the conditions we're dealing with where it's pulling in so much of the plant. And I wasn't running either one of them when either of the incidents happened, so I, I cannot be to blame for this. First thing we'll do is pull this header off, set it to the side so we can get to the feeder house and see what we're dealing with there. I'm gonna wait on that side until I'm out of here. No need to make a big mess in the shop.
Why is there oil on everything? I don't know where that's coming from. But my hands should not be covered in oil from doing that. All right, let's just see what happens here so I can hear what he's talking about. I think the separator itself in the back is all spinning, so it's got to be in the feeder house. Let's see if I can reverse things here. That's a pretty good slug right there. I'm thinking I just fixed it. We're good. Well, we're clear, but our feeder house is not lined up the way it's supposed to be. And that's a product of just taking in bad corn that's laying on the ground. Neither of those two things are cool. I got it unplugged. Just the feeder house. It reversed right out of it once I took the header off. You gather your feeder house chains okay? Yeah, well, no. No, it's not lined up. No, I knew it wasn't lined up. It's off either a link or maybe even two. So I'm gonna go get the blower and clean the feeder house off. And then we'll have to clean that header up and... The header should clean up easy. If we yeah, but we gotta fix that chain. I will. Off it's on the outside, so I think it's coming from the connection. Yeah, yeah something. That's what I think. Or holes that sleep. Nothing, nothing changed? Yeah. We did nothing and it stayed the same. But I don't have a ratcheting 30 mil. They left me to go work on a being the unload motor. This I can kind of do anything electrical. I just walk away from it. Oh yeah. Oh no. Oh man. I gotta go find my safe space. This is a custom ratchet strap designed just for holding feeder hose covers out of the way. Yeah, we got some issues in here. We've had a rock in here or two, and maybe it is off in the center. Back it up with the belt. Yeah, let's back it up. It looks pretty crooked. Yeah, I think so. It doesn't make sense. You know, I thought, yeah, I thought yesterday when we looked at it. No, that's not, that's not on like the sides are. No. So that would pull it forward up front. Would that, that would, make would it that worse. do it? Yeah, that would make it worse. Yeah. If you pull it. He's not even working today, he's up north. That's what Eric told me, yeah. It's shooting to change that side, obviously, but... Oh, that side looks pretty great. Should we just try it again? It's it not that jump difficult. Unshot. It jumped. I heard it jump. Did you go all the way oh, around? Oh, we need to get the socket out? Yeah, I yeah. Once the socket's up, it'll change it. Yeah, I will. It looks pretty good yeah. down here, I think. Yeah, I think that, yeah. I think it's pretty straight. You see, a job like that, you just, you, you couldn't have done that with, without gear wrench tools. Any other brand of tools just would not have been sufficient. We all know that. You know it, I know it, everybody knows this. Put this one on the other head. Oh, if the other one wasn't gonna be back, You may want to, uh, yeah, put the, put the 30 footer on it. There's been a change of plans and we've decided since we're down to one machine, we may as well put the 30 foot wide header on instead of the 20. So that's sitting up at the field. I just got to fuel up here, but right now there's a line at the pump. Ah, oh, these guys, come on. Ah, the old finger snap trick just never gets old. I really hate washing windows, but I really enjoy being able to see what I'm doing. So much easier to see straight into the yard now that there's no corn in the way. 
That Wishek desk definitely doesn't chop the stringy stocks up the way the Mondeco does, but but it gets it pretty black and it's not plugging up. We've got raindrops on the window, so we just we're just not gonna dry. It's not gonna get drier. Actually, I called Eric and got a couple tips from him, and we got it straightened out. Yep. 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 So I'm headed to the field with the 9870 now. What's uh, what's the status on the other one? Sounds as though they are hoping our second machine will be done this afternoon, so maybe three, four hours. If the rain holds off, we got some drops on the windshield already. Here, you need the WD-40 Specialist Dry Lube with PTFE? Yep, that'll work great. Oh, simple as that. That's good. Well, I made it about 60 feet, and I see what he was talking about when he kept having problems with this reel plugging up. I don't know why this header would do it so much, and that other one never did it a single time, and he had real problems with this one, which, yeah, I can see. I was going two miles an hour, and in 60 feet it plugged already. But we're wet, I don't, it might not go at all. This could be a, difficult that is not supposed to be happening my guess is this is not gonna go Jim I'm betting there's no way right there that guy swinging around is gonna be the problem it's gonna grab another big clump and wedge everything in there there's got to be an adjustment of some sort I mean, we, at first we thought that hanger bearing in the middle was the issue because the other header doesn't have this problem and it doesn't have that hanger bearing in the middle because it's a narrower header, it's one single auger. But there's got to be an adjustment somewhere or something beyond that I think is causing this. I'm going to give it one more try here, Jim. Clear this one out, give it one more try, and then... <laughs> yeah, we're done, I think. in about two hours the sun is going to be out again by my thing here i also notice how it's got a handy little deal that lets me know when the rock trap is open when i back up because there's a pile of corn cobs in the middle you see these yellow things all over the ground here right in the middle these are actually what we want in the combine we don't we don't want them on the ground like that luckily i've only gone about 80 feet so i caught it in time We call that the rock trap. If you get a rock in there and it picks it up, that trap will have tendency to catch a smaller rock in there before it goes through the rest of the machine. But fun fact, it also holds corn cobs in as they go by. Well, that was quick. Didn't go anywhere. He said the sun's out in Hoffman right now. Yeah, it's coming out here. It looked like on the, on the thing it was gonna come out and stay out for a while now, so. If we could get an hour of sun, I think it'd be okay, but yeah. when I pulled the Stocks out of there now, they're wet. Oh, yeah, walking across here, it's just wet. Time. I mean, damn, not right. wet, but damn. Sounds like Nate 2.0 isn't real excited about the job this is doing. So I'm gonna go check it out here. I don't know, it looks good. It definitely doesn't chop like the Mendeco. I think the perfect scenario would be to hit it all with the Mendeco and chop it, and then bring this in and get it black. But we got Two inches of rain coming and that Mendeco was plugging up in this stuff, so. Yeah, you ain't got no choice. It kind of just seems like this is our option. If you want to get anything done, you... right. We've got an electrician here now. Where would that go? Legs running. I'm trying to get a motor fixed. We got it. I think we got that motor fixed. Which is good because we gotta load some dry corn out of there real soon. Get the center pulled out and we weren't able to do that with a motor that didn't run. As you can tell, it's always something, and most of the time it's many things. You're gonna check your trail cam? The camera was dead, so hopefully it didn't die two weeks ago. Oh, so you just, is it just like I double brought, A's? I brought the camera with you. Okay. 
So I'll bring it back out there. Okay. Here's our next project while we wait for the corn to dry. This air exchanger pipe here, this is where we switch what bin we're going into. We can move it over. It's got a couple of bends in it. It recently wore a hole in each bend. Uh, just a few million bushels of corn that have gone through it over the years. Wore, <coughs> wore a little dime size hole in it. But I patched it exactly the way you're supposed to, which is with 40,000 aluminum race car tin, folded in half and bent to the shape of the pipe, and then you just duct tape the crap out of it. It's been holding for a while, but now we got a new pipe we got to put on there. So I hope you guys enjoy this, because I don't really know what I'm doing here. Which really is it's pretty standard for my videos, I just don't always tell you that. We got to get that bottom shaft out of that collar too. Yeah. So it's got to come back a couple inches. Tell you what, I'd even help you load it. Everything is up and running again. We are combining. Dad is out running right now. We got Onyx in the grain cart. We actually just finished up our worst field of laid down corn. I'm gonna run up the road and actually run spotter for them because we're gonna move one mile south to the next field, but we're gonna leave the 30 foot header on the combine. So we gotta get down uh, we got to get down the highway that way, but it's only one mile So we're just gonna wait till there's an opening and zip down it as quick as we can. Okay. Well, yeah Just I'd say just leave it out with the keys in it and we'll swing down and grab it Okay, sounds good. Okay. Thanks Daryl yeah, sure. Bye Second combine is ready. Yep. I see you coming. You're still clear both directions down the highway All clear from the south yet you should be good Huh? Not exactly sure what to think about that. Let's go see if we can get a quick interview here with the grain car driver. All right, I'm here with the grain car driver, Onyx Johnson. Onyx, would you like to do a quick interview? Yes. What was it like getting down that highway with this rig? Did everything work good? Yeah. Okay, would you like to elaborate at all on how the race went? Um, I'd like to thank my sponsors, John Deere and um, the steering wheel. And C in April. And C in April skis. Okay, yeah. And what about your crew today? Who stands behind you? Who really makes this um, thing go? I'd like to thank Zach Johnson and Frank um, Renee. All right, awesome. Hey, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> that kid is weird. No idea where he gets that stuff from. field appears to be and should be and I'm pretty sure it is standing quite a bit better than the stuff we've been in as we move south things just get a little bit better hopefully we can use one machine here and go with the rows and not have to mess around so much like we've been doing Please don't put it in the ditch. Please don't put it in the ditch. Please don't put it in the ditch. He did it. I'm just gonna stand here and watch all day. That's that's my thing. We got here just in time for the rain. Yeah. As long as we're back here at the farm for a little bit, I've got the wet bin running down. 
just so we could check the corn that's sitting at the bottom of it because it's been here for several days now. And even though we've had the aeration fan on the whole time, it still just makes you feel better if you know all the corn in the wet bin is not starting to rot or anything. Or starting to get hot, that's kind of the big thing. You make sure the temperature's there because if it's starting to get hot, it means it's starting to spoil. All right, time to go get that other combine. There she be, all fixed up. Hopefully anyway, that was the idea. And we're way down there on fuel. Dad left right from the field, so we're gonna top it off. Can't get it? Oh, it's got that chain on it. <laughs> that damn chain. Yeah. <laughs> oh my. Somebody's got a nice unit coming. Hey, it looks like our 12 brand new tractors are in. Figured I'd park her in the shed because the plan was to just keep the other machine moving right now because it's supposed to rain and I no longer turn the key off and now it's raining. Relatively lightly, I'd, I'd call it a light rain. But the east wind definitely picked up. I think we all know what that means and it looks pretty gloomy to the west. We're doing some job switching here but they got a few acres knocked out already. I'm gonna go sit in the combine and for the first time all year on corn actually follow the rows. You guys got a bunch knocked out. Yeah, we don't have the west end rows off. Oh, okay. Just to that corner. Okay. So, but it's 20 some acres. So that's why you wanted to switch now. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Sure. Oh, that's easy to open up that end. Well, Becky just called and they're talking large hail, damaging winds, and tornado possibilities in a couple hours. Really? Yeah. Mm. But until then, I guess. We harvest corn. I've never harvested corn during a tornado watch. I've harvested corn in plenty of blizzards. Well, this corn is definitely not fantastic, but it's definitely much better than what we've been doing. We should have the worst of us, the worst of it behind us. And I know we've got quite a bit that's like this. Maybe the majority of it that's left, but uh, this is, I'll, I'll take this. We can drive straight. I'm actually using straight track. I don't know, I don't have a problem with this. We can, we can deal with this. However, large hail and damaging winds would really be a problem on stuff like this, because it's already, well now it's mostly dead and it's falling over anyway, so that would be a problem. But I can't do anything about it, so I'm just gonna keep combining and eat this chocolate chip cookie that Ready Egg sent me. I got a few sprinkles on my windshield right now, but I just turned around to head back to the west, so I'll check radar and see what I think as far as as far as timing goes and let you know, but maybe one or two more rounds at the most. Uh, if it works out, you can drive back to the field and get a vehicle. See that red strip on there? That's kind of what we're concerned about right now. Randy, the master pipe layer, is 40 miles that way, and he said it is I won't use his exact words. I, I'll say it's raining cats and dogs. Woo! There is some really impressive lightning happening right now. And that wind has really picked up. So maybe instead of standing on a combine platform and talking to the camera like the YouTubing millennial that I am, I should try to get a truck out of the field. We're gonna shut things down, okay? Put things in, because I think you know what's coming a lot better than we do. Didge is gonna be real excited. Are you pumped, Didge? I'm pretty sure this is it. So, I'm gonna turn some lights off Get the leg shut off so there's no belts moving over there. I don't know, then I'll just go inside, put on some sweatpants and grab a cold beer. Toodles!